that's waiting for the recorder to start. Yeah, so per the uh, access control as the first uh, uh, step we start, we'll start with. The question I asked you um, here at the beginning of the class regarding to the differences in between the uh, sparse matrix and the extended sparse matrix. Simply, the question is that we're going to consider the processes uh, as subjects and objects also to be viewed as uh, subjects and objects. Here we see in the extended uh, sparse matrix, yes, we are going to see the uh, the, uh, the subjects, uh, processes and the threads to be playing the role of uh, objects. And the same, the same scenario, the subjects that might be actually considered as processes. Why? Because an antivirus or a firewall or an IDS or an IPS, heats or needs or whatever, PEDS, they are all considered to be uh, playing the role of a subject in some scenarios when we are tackling the uh, file scan or some activities that the antiviruses or security appliances do. They would be seen as subjects. This is the uh, extended ma matrix or extended sparse matrix. And uh, this is the unique difference when you compare this the sparse matrix with the extended sparse matrix. Other than that, all is uh, a correlation in between the uh, subjects and objects, the access control, the mechanism of the access control, no more, no less. Uh, we, uh, we defined, and from here we are going to continue, we define that the uh, view that the subject would be actually having the right to access an object is based on the roles, which is either to read or to write or to be an, uh, an owner so he can execute something like that. He, uh, even an owner he cannot execute, but in some cases, so uh, the roles they are either to read or to write or to uh, execute. The users, they are actually either a normal user, the resource owner, or a group of users, or any other. Here we talk about processes and threats, like the antiviruses or security appliances. What are those? A system we see a subject as a person, a user. A person means you, me, he, she, and everybody. The creator of a resource, the file. You create a new word file, so you are an owner. The system will see you as an owner. Or he will see you as a, a member from a group. Let's say a student. You are a member from the student group. You are not. You are nothing. But a member from a group of students. So if you are a, group, a member from a group, so you are here. So you are belonging to a group of users. Or you are going to be seen as a third member, which is a subject. Huh? You are going to be seen as a process, a process. Example of process, we said all the security appliances, they are to be seen as processes. They are subjects. Why they are subjects? Because they do, they act, they behave. They try to access resources, they try to use resources, they scan resources, they search for resources. The resources, they are the malware in general. So, owners, groups, and others, they are having the rights to either read, or write, or execute a resource. Read, write, execute. Read what? Resource. Write on what? On a resource. Execute what? A resource. A notation is R W D or R sorry R W E execute. And here uh, we are seeing hyphen or list of hyphens means this write is not given to this particular user. For example, in this example here, the uh, the current the owner, the, the source owner in this example here. He has the right to read, and he has the right to write, and he does not have the right to execute. He's prevented from executing. Why? Because we are seeing hyphen here. This is an annotation only. The same thing. Any member from a given group here, he would have the right of reading, and he would have the right to write, and he would not have the right to execute. 
appliances and threads and processes, they would not have the right to read, and they would not have the right to write, and they would not have the right to execute. They cannot even see the resource, this given resource, the resource in question. And this is, and this is, here, this is an example of an extended view, here. This is an, exa an example of an extended view. So, when we translate this past matrix here, we will see a process owner, we see a group of processes, let's say a group of subjects in general, not process for subjects, and we see actually processes themselves. So the correlation of this view here generates something like this, generates something like this. So user or a group or other. Have the right to read, write, execute, or do not have. They might have, they might not have. This is not standard. This is the example given here, RW minus, RW minus, 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 minus. This is an example. But if we want to secure a file and the owner will not be able to write in, he can only read, we can change. So R minus, minus. It depends on the context. So from the mandatory access control, actually, mechanism, we pass to the role-based access mechanism. Uh, mandatory, uh, the, uh, the MAC mandatory access. Regarding the role-based co access control here, we are going to define a correlation, a relationship, an access, a path that links a subject to a resource. Whomever the subject is, whomever the subject is, and whatever the resource is, the path here is will uh, is being given to a, a subject to access a resource based on what? Based on his function inside the environment. What is his role inside the environment? So that role only defines what he can see as resources. Okay, taking the example of an administrator, for example. An example of uh, an administrator, yes. University of Nisbah here, the technical department, the CIS department, administrator, what he can do? He can access all resources to check up or to whatever he want to do. He is an administrator inside the IS department. He has a right to access all resources. And this is drawn here, see, this, uh, for example, this here, this image, this user here, is an administrator, so he can access the resources available, the totality of the resources available. Why? Because he is an administrator. As per an example, we are saying. Students know at every level they are, have an, a right to access a certain list of resources. Level 1, for example, students level 1, they can access only this resource. Student level 2, they can access those two resources, see the arrows. Okay, instructor level one, he can access this resource only, and so on. So, depends on the role here. Just what I want you to understand is that the role, the function, the activity that the user has to do specifies what resources he can access. R back, role based, access control. Uh, actually, as per cardinality draw, or as, uh, as per cardinality draw, uh, this uh, back can draw a many-to-many -many, uh, cardinality means we can have many users access many resources, many-to-many. -many. It can draw such a relationship. And this role 
based access control scenario it is often static in the sense of if you are a student you remain a student so if you are a student level one the full year you will have only access to this resource next year if you succeed you'll pass to the next level and you might have access to different resources next year and because of this we are saying often not usually and it is static for sure because it will remain the same for a long period of time role based access control withdraw as pass matrix absolutely we can do and we have to actually pass matrix to visualize the correlation between the users and the the, the resources the subjects and the objects the subjects and the objects what a subject can do on a given object. It's pass matrix that draws that. Any questions here before I continue? Okay, I consider everything is clear, actually. I consider everything is uh, clear. Are you able to hear me, please? Is my voice hearable to you? Yes, Mr. Yes. Yes, great. So we continue. Uh, so, uh, the same concern in the same regard, which is the RBAC, the role-based, the RBAC, role-based access control we are going to define define it uh, with a segregation of the levels let's say in order to control well because because a student is a user an instructor is a user an administrator is a user but how we are going to implement those roles those roles how we are going to implement them inside the system user the student is a user so he has username and password an administrator he is a user means he have also he has sorry a username and password okay both of them they are using a username and a password to access the resources Yet, 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 um, yet um, um, the system has to recognize clearly this is a student. He does not have to have an access to all the resources. And this is an administrator. He has to access all. Uh, how to do that? This is standardized and we have an approach that we have to go beyond. beyond. We are having four levels via which we see the users belonging to um, also being spread amongst those four levels here uh, starting from the level zero until the level number three they are four levels roll back sorry roll based um, access control level zero or le yes level zero we are having a very minimal functionality given to a, a subject in order to yes access uh, the minimum resources we can say that so minimal functionality may be it is only to visualize, for example, only to see your profile or your data, personal content. This is the level zero. The level one, the role-based access control level one, actually we are having the same functionality given in level zero, but in addition to, in addition to what you are belonging to as a group, for example, if you are a student, you'll have the minimal functionality, which is to visualize the menu, plus what given to you as a member of a group if you are a student what given to students will be displayed to you what given to the group or the list of groups you belong to will be given to you inheritance if uh, for me actually as an instructor i will be given the minimal functionality for sure in addition to that i will inherit all the functionalities given to instructors 
but the instructors instructors have I will receive the same the same rows this is level one level two we will have the same early set only the minimal functionality level level zero the minimal functionality will be given to all now and in addition to that in addition to that we will see constraints here plain uh, or put in, in action in the sense of minimal functionality will be given to you plus 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 a list of restrictions you are not allowed to open you are not allowed to open you are not allowed to open and so on because you are in the uh, level two so if you are in this group or in this level access control or roles given to you are the minimal functionalities plus list of restrictions yeah to control you to control the resources you can see or you can manipulate level three level three which is the fourth level are back three here we are going to see the minimal functionality yes plus those two the inheritance and the constraints you will inherit all the roles from the groups you belong to plus plus the restrictions both of them you will have the inheritance roles the inherited roles plus you will be deprived from the constraints from the restrictions you are level three here you are in level three here uh, usually actually when you say that the level zero it's a minimal functionality it's a, a relationship it's a relationship between the subject and uh, the uh, the given or the assigned uh, uh, so we might say role or uh, resources themselves so it is a relationship in between the subject and the object the minimal functionality so we give the example in any wave the menu to open the pages or to open the resources or to open your data in background the menu this is the minimal but the menu will not be functional until you are in one of those uh, levels here one two or three to see what is available for you for your session still in the same regard still in the same regard see this graph here on top see on top here having the level zero which is the basic and the very minimal functionality will be given or assigned here if you are a student or if you are an instructor or if you are a technical administrative or something like that you'll inherit you will be here our back one and you'll inherit the roles given to you the groups you'll inherit that if you are just a visitor or a guest you'll be having the minimal functionality yes plus you are de deprived from list of functions you will be eliminated you'll not be having the, uh, the the right to access for example the uh, exam area you will not be uh, having the right to access the uh, grades area or something like that you will be restricted from accessing a list of resources constraints level two if you are a guest for example level two but if you are an administrator if you are an administrator for example technical administrator you'll have all the roles you'll be here in level three and you'll have the right of the minimal functionality plus the inheritance plus the restrictions you'll have uh, uh, all the roles with you the restrictions here means you'll be de deprived from accessing something yes you might administrator cannot delete marks uh, me as an instructor here I will re receive the inheritance uh, I will receive all what it can be inherited from the instructors group but administrator if I input marks administrator does not have the right to delete the marks I put so an administrator will be deprived but he is an administrator yes but he will be deprived from deleting resources something like that De deleting marks for example so a relationship in between users and roles will uh, generate let's say permissions a relationship between the users and the roles will generate permissions 
So a user have a route. A user have a route. And the constraint is linked actually in between the roles and the users. This relationship between the users and the roles, governed by a group of constraints, will generate permissions. A permission, a permission is seen on top of a session. A permission is seen on top of a session. What does it mean? If you open the username, or sorry, if you open the edu using your username and password, so the system will recognize your role. So you are a user that have a role, and this role will give you permission to access, for example, your transcript. For how long? For one minute, for one hour, for one day, or something like that. That is a session. Any questions here, please? No, Mr. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, actually, example of hierarchy or inheritance. We took the example of the students and the instructors. Here, in the context of the constraints and the restrictions, you have to have a good understanding of the referential integrity uh, from the databases in order to understand it very well. What does it mean? It means actually when we have a relationship in between two entities, when we have a relationship in between two entities, the relationship will draw the um, the integrity from an entity to another. In the sense of, in the sense of, the exclusivity of a function given to a subject, it is it is based on the relationship type. If you are allowed to have many registering, if you can register so many times, or no, you can only register one time. So this is a mutual exclusivity. For example, as an administrator can have two accounts, or can have three accounts, or can have n accounts. So. <clears throat> So we can mutually exclude an administrator from being deprived to do many registrations. So, so based on the role, we can make mutual exclusivity. Permissions will be given to a, a specific subject, so he will be deprived, or he can be actually, this is actually an exclusive um, permission given to an exclusive um, subject, something like that. Cardinality is the relationship in between the number of uh, functions to do between two subjects, or between two, let's say, entities, something like that. And the prerequisite role, it is in the sense of we are going to give a subject an extra function or an extra role if he's already, already been uh, assigned. So oh, you, as a student, you are, for example, uh, assigned the role of sharing resources with students. Yes, you are a student, but still you are, as a student, you are given the role of to share resources with students. This is actually an administrator role to share resources or an instructor role. But if you are given the role in a primordial step, to share resources, so once you access your portal, you will be able to share resources. This is due to what? A prerequisite role given to you. A primordial, a prerequisite role given to you. You who? The user, the subject. <clears throat> Any questions at this level here? Any questions please related to the role-based access control? No, doctor. That's great. No, Mr. Yeah, great, great. So the uh, model number four, the model number four, which is the uh, still RBAC 
which is the here rule based axe control or we might say attribute based axe control rule not role if I change this O with you it becomes rule so this is the fourth model here we are going to use the attribute based axe control or it is the rule based axe control it is based on group of rules we are going to give access to resources yes we decide from 8 to 4 a.m. from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. students cannot open EduWave inside the University of Nizwa campus what is this is this a technical issue no 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 this is a rule this is a rule set by the administrators to make the educational process goes fine so rule based access control is a mechanism that might be utilized by administrators to control the access to resources It is actually uh, to be uh, a subject of specifying roles to be uh, given to different uh, um, uh, yes, subjects. It is a question of uh, fluency to give to, de to give dedicated access uh, rights to, to different users separately, one by one. It is more, uh, more fluent when we talk about uh, uh, access control mechanisms it is much more uh, um, fluent much more uh, flexible in the sense of based on the user properties we can give access rights based on the subject properties we can give different access rights so the properties the properties specifies properties of a subject specifies the access right it is much more actually flexible when you compare to other access mechanisms it is not the best it is a different access control mechanism it might be utilized when needed it might be utilized when needed based on the what on the attributes the attributes here we talk about the properties we will see the example right now actually it is much more reasonably um, uh, trusted when we talk about cloud services in the sense of if we're talking about the web environment the WW environment so how many types of users we have we have numerous types of users numerous is the internet we have a long list that you fail to count even you as a user as a human being you fail to count the types of users inside the internet so because of this, it has to be used, this attribute-based access control, to specify the access rights to resources from different users based on their attributes, based on their attributes. So it is one of the very famous and the very successful access rights to be given, to be, to be applied to control the access to resources. They are segregated into groups, but even though, even though, even though, let's uh, talk about examples here. When you talk about the subject, what are the attributes of a subject? Subject who? It's the user, the user, me, you, the uh, process or whatever. Uh, what are the attributes that can specify a, a subject? For example, me, what is the difference between me and you? I am an instructor and you are a student. So the title or the job title. The name might be different also. The, uh, the, the unit I, I, I belong to might be different. So those are examples of attributes. Attributes that can be specific to a given subject. 
An object. What does it mean object? A resource. A file. A database entity. Something like that. So a file. What is the uh, list of properties or attributes specified to a given object? The title, for example, the name of the file. The title. Who wrote that file? The author. When was written or created that file? So the date. So those are examples of attributes that to be specified for an object. Because we cannot say the date of the creation of a, uh, of a subject, but we can the date of birth. So it's something different. So those are examples of attributes belonging to an object. Those are not the unique attributes, subject and object, but environment where the subject and the object they play the role or we can see the relationship in between the subject and the object is the environment in the sense of in the sense of uh, we can open a resource over an internet or over a network or in a local computer so we are talking about an environment to specify the relationship in between the object and the subject. Because if I'm here in Oman, the time is now, for example, is um, uh, 11 or 12 or whatever. If I go to the United States, there will be a difference of 7 or 8 or 11 hours. It depends on the region I'm in. So the time is not the same. So based on the time, based on the time, the current time, it's different. So if you're allowed to open the for example, the exam at 8 a.m., your local time, your current time, so it will be different from a region to another. This is an environmental property. This is an environmental attribute. This is an example only. So, so, environment is one of the uh, considerations we have to consider, our administrators have to technically consider in order to draw the relationship and to assign rules or to assign roles or to, ac uh, to give access to resources. To assign rules and roles to subjects on top of objects, usually. And this is not actually this is not actually one of the considerations but why because it is in real plane it is considered to be neglected in, in so many cases it depends on the scenario no more because of the uh, uh, as per the example we given here the uh, the current time it has to be considered you are not going to give uh, to pass the exam at midnight you have to open it at uh, 8 a.m so let's say so it has to be considered in something like that. it depends on the context to consider them or not to consider what the environment the environmental attributes it depends on the uh, the the project in question any questions at this level please before we continue we are almost finished uh, we are uh, almost about to finish this unit number uh, four no texture so I'm going to stop the recording, and if you hear your name, please say yes, say I'm here.